How's it going guys? Welcome back to Newegg TV. I'm Kyle and today I'm going to be doing an overview of this case from BitPhoenix. This is their Pandora Micro ATX chassis. So here's a look at the front of the case. The dimensions measure 160 millimeters wide by 418 millimeters tall by 459 millimeters deep. And you can see it's actually got a pretty slim profile. Again, it is micro ATX, but can also accommodate mini ITX motherboards as well. Now, at the front, there is no optical drive bay, as you might see, which isn't too big of a deal for most of us. But there is some kind of neat feature that BitPhoenix has included. It's called their BitPhoenix icon feature. And you can't really tell here, but there's actually a small little PC display that will actually power on when the system's power it on and you can actually take a picture anything you want and drag and drop it from your computer uh, into into this area right here and anytime your system's on you basically get a, a little bit of a customization feature there so it's really neat I'm actually gonna pop the si this uh, front panel off in just a bit and you, you'll get a closer look underneath to see how it actually works Taking a look at the top of the case, we do get some front I.O., including mic and headphone jacks, two USB 3.0 ports, and fairly large power and reset buttons for your convenience. Also, behind that, you do get another removable dust filter that spans the entire depth of your case. You can simply press down on both sides of the left side, and it instantly removes, just like that. Here's a closer look more quick and easy cleaning. And just below that, you do get your pre-installed 120 millimeter fan, as well as a very interesting and unique mounting spot for a 3.5 inch mechanical drive. You actually do see some four rubber pads here to reduce noise and vibration, which is always nice. Uh, and I believe that the drive can only be mounted a certain way so that your SATA connectors are facing the back of the case. So just bear that in mind when planning your cable routing for this case. This is the bottom of the case. And look, there are feet. Four feet with uh, kind of a foam padding on the bottom. You can't really see them from the outside when this is standing upright because they're kind of masked by the aluminum side panels on both sides. But there they are. They will add some stability to your case when it's on a hard mounted surface. And you also do get some mounting points right here for either one or uh, one three and a half or one two and a half inch drive. That actually will mount on the inside of the case, thankfully. I'll give you a closer look at that once we get inside. And finally, there is a magnetic dust filter yet again for your power supply, which comes off just like that. Here's a look at the left side of the case, and I don't know if you can tell, but both side panels are made fully of aluminum. Very nice construction, very durable. They don't flex barely at all, so uh, very very reassuring there. Um, also, the window is fairly generous, and you actually get a little dip right here, because that's where one of the SSD mounts is, or a two and a half inch drive. It is made of acrylic, and that's pretty much it. Uh, on the other side, you get basically the identical side panel, except there is no window. Here's a look at the rear of the case. You get a cutout for your motherboard I.O. shield, some ventilation, as well as one, two, three, four, five expansion slots. As you guys know, uh, one of the main benefits of having a micro ATX case is being able to condense it into a small, small enough space and take up a very small footprint while still actually maintaining some support for multi-GPU setups, which this case does brilliantly accommodate. There's also a little plastic tab that comes off to reveal all of your PCI thumb screws. Uh, actually, instead of Phillips head ends, these actually have uh, Allen wrench. So it does come with an Allen wrench, you can kind of uh, access those. If you want even more access to those, maybe to tighten them a little bit more, you can actually remove this little back panel here, which is also made of aluminum, by the way, to get uh, better access to those. And at the very bottom, you also do get a slot for your power supply. Now, I know I already kind of briefly went over this, but this is the other side panel on the right side, just so you guys can see it for yourselves. Once again, full loom construction, no window, uh, but I guess I'll take this opportunity to show you exactly how these side panels work. They're completely toolless, so you can just kind of pop them off like so. They use these little ball and sockets uh, mechanisms to actually stay attached to the, the case. So very nifty design, helps the building process go by a bit smoother. So since I popped the right side panel off of the case, I figured I might as well pop the left one off to give you guys a fuller view or perspective of the front side panel itself. So uh, this is made of plastic. Again, it does have quite a bit of ventilation on both sides, so you're getting healthy airflow to the front of your case, or through the fr front of your ca case, I should say. Pops off fairly easily, like so. And that does reveal a very nice magnetic dust filter that pops right off for easy cleaning, as well as a 120 millimeter fan right here in, in the front. But you also do have the option for another 120 fan just below it, or you could actually mount a 240 millimeter radiator at the front for additional water cooling support. And really quick before I forget, I did want to give you guys a little behind the scenes view of that BitPhoenix icon module. So here it is, it's essentially an LCD right under here with a little uh, chip that does all the processing. Uh, and basically it is a full color screen, so it's not just black and white or single color. And once again, you can customize pretty much any picture that you want that you have on your computer. You can just drag and drop and it'll be illuminated uh, very clearly on the other side. 
So now we've made our way into the main chamber of the case. So first off, you do get a black painted interior, which is always nice. And uh, also taking a look at the motherboard tray itself, you do get a pretty generous cutout for your CPU cooler, as well as uh, Bitfenix has included some pre-installed standoffs for easy mounting and ins installation of your motherboard, as well as a couple big cutouts for those main cables that you might need, such as your ATX and SATA cables, just off to the right of that motherboard uh, mounting area. Just below that, you do get uh, four rubber pads in the power supply mounting area so that it also reduces noise and vibration, which is a nice touch. And over here, you kind of have an interesting little chamber where you can mount a two and a half inch drive right here at the front. And uh, again, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but uh, you, you notice that the window on the side panel actually has a little dip right there. And that's just to show off the SSD that's mounted right here. So you can show it off to all of your friends. You also do get some uh, routing holes uh, with grommets at the top because that's ex essentially where some of your um, cables from your power supply are going to be routed through. Uh, you can also route them behind the case as well, which we'll get a closer look at. And on the very bottom, again, are those mounting points for either a, a 2.5 inch or 3.5 inch drive. And really quick before we move on to the other side of the case, I did want to point out that uh, you get some front panel connectors here as well, which do correspond to the ports that I pointed out at the top of the case earlier. So you get USB 3, as well as power and reset and all that good stuff, as well as USB 2, which is actually going to power your BitPhoenix Icon integrated display screen. All right, so on the right side of the case, here's a cleaner look of, of all the cutouts, uh, particularly for your CPU cooler, as well as those cable routing holes. Uh, kind of hard to see this one up here from the other side, but there it is. You also do get another, uh, this is your third and final mounting point for a two and a half inch drive. So up to three SSDs in the system. Uh, there are some holes here for your mounting and you might notice they're a little big for an SSD mounting spot. Uh, but this case does come included with rubber grommets, uh, little rubber uh, circles that you can put in here to really tighten that uh, connection up and mount an SSD successfully right there. You also do get uh, quite a few amount of, um, of tie down points for routing all your cables, particularly on the left side because that's where most of the cable routing in this case is going to be. As you can see, there's quite an indent here compared to the right side of the case where your motherboard is as there's very little space between the motherboard tray and the side panel. So again, most of your cabling is going to be done here, which is why it's really nice that they've included uh, quite a few of those tie down points. And last but not least, you do get some accessories with this case, including the BitPhoenix Pandora user's manual. You also do get some accessories for routing your cables, including some zip ties as well as Velcro straps. Always a nice consideration to be thrown in. And finally, or not finally, but you also do get some mounting accessories, including uh, an Allen wrench key, a hex adapter for your motherboard standoffs, the standoffs themselves, as well as mounting screws and those rubber O-rings for your drives. Very handy. And now, last but not least, you do get the BitPhoenix case badge, which is actually fairly nice. It's made of steel, it's got an adhesive backing, so you can stick it to pretty much anywhere on the chassis, and it does have a nice little chrome finish on the front. It's very shiny. Mm. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this overview. Once again, this has been the BitPhoenix Pandora. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to New Egg TV for more tech videos, and we'll see you guys next time.